something I learned about this new generation of winemakers on this France run was their united mindset in making the world a better place with more responsible winemaking techniques to prevent global warming. But I feel like it's rare to see the extended commitment that Jeremy is taking to make sure that the entire wine world is a better place by his support of organizations like the Roots Fund and especially all the support that he's given the wine and hip hop brand over the years. But it does feel like things are getting more extreme. Uh, we we be beating records all the time of driest, hottest, coldest, wettest, etc. Um, earliest, latest, and that sort of thing. Um, so we're, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to get the word out there. This is something that it's not, it's not, to, it's not debatable in terms of science. The models that were made for global warming were made in the 80s and they're verifying for a lot of them. They're not perfect because no model is. Um, but we're, we're feeling it and for a long time I think Burdigandy benefited from warmer and getting riper. Uh, but we're at a tipping point right. and, and we're going to need people to start um, started thinking long and hard about how they consume, what they want to support, et cetera, to put some pressure to drive change in, yeah. in environmentally. So as a winemaker, how do you plan for the future with, you know, the, I mean, there's not just the global <laughs> warming, yeah. but there's just crazy shit happening all no, over the I, world. I, I think, you know, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, of causes to pick up. And um, there's a lot of injustice. There's uh, there's environmental causes that we're very directly connect and connected to, but everything is so interconnected that um, I think it's important. We're, we're, for, we're a rare area of agriculture that has a bit of a podium. As you said, we don't look like our customers, but we still have people who walk in the door and access to, uh, to media and to some of our, of our uh, wealthier customers who have giant podiums potentially. Um, and so I think it's important to do some activism and, and occasionally people are just, but you know, stick to your lane. There's a little yeah. bit of that. You're, you make wine and I like the fact that you make wine, but I don't want to hear your other opinions. But the fact is, wine gets used as a political tool. It gets used in diplomacy. It got used for tariffs under Trump. Um, it got used as boycotts uh, during George W. Bush. Uh, we are dependent on the global shipping system, which is currently being very affected by the pandemic and by politics as well. Um, we, we are dependent on glass and there's two furnaces that closed down in Ukraine, uh, which is leading to big delays in, in, in primary goods and, and dry goods. So we're, we're really connected to all of this. So yeah, I think we, should, we owe it to our, ourselves, to our customers, to be transparent about it, to express our opinions about it and to share them. And if it, drive, it can help drive some change, I'm, I'm all for it. Um, as you know, I'm involved with the Roots Fund and, uh, and on their board and I, it's been really great. I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really taken up with that with that particular cause. Um, but, but also, I'm, I'm just, why didn't I do this earlier? I actually had the access to do this. People and to drive some change. And um, and if we can if we can affect a few lives positively, then then that's 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 a great thing. And I do view it as part of my job. I think it's very professionally gratifying. No, that's really dope, man. Let's try All these right, ones let's go. here. So we'll try. We'll start with a warmer, the warmer vintage. I'll just pull out this cork. Come on, man. <clears throat> yeah, it's been um, it's crazy to just see how how connected everything is. I mean, when you mentioned the thing about the glass, I didn't even think about that. Um, but even like just uh, thinking about it, like figuring out how much product you should plan for, should you think about other areas? I mean, have you ever approached any of that? Well, we have a winery in Provence, um, and, and we make a lot of rosé, so hot summers are good for our business. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I think it's hard to be in too many places at once. And mm -hmm. here, this is about excellence and not cutting corners and going really into the detail things, so it's hard to devote um, ourselves to too many other things. But you're not wrong, we should be looking. So we're doing some experiments in our vineyards to, you know, hedging trials, uh, trellising trials, things like that. Um, and we, sh we should go towards rootstock trials and, and clonal selection trials uh, to try to anticipate drought or, or heat or possibly things getting colder because with one of the theories is with the, um, the melting ice caps, changes in salinity could eliminate the Gulf Stream. Wow. So France with no Gulf Stream would be quite a lot colder actually. Um, anyway, something to... It's just... 
It's interesting. Pay attention to science class, kids. <laughs> I know, uh, uh, you know, a little over a century ago, it was phylloxera was the big yeah. challenge. Yeah, yeah. It was the big challenge for that generation. That's I think true. global warming will be ours. So you got a really good way of putting things into perspective. Like I was saying, <laughs> I've noticed on this trip, we've been kicking it. You have a really great way of just, you know, centering. I, I worry about a lot. <laughs> <laughs> just help them, I worry it's your about. calming mechanism. Yeah.